Channel 18 News, I'm Jim Rogers. A pancake breakfast fundraiser for Stephen Vickery will focus on cost of living expenses while he is in need of a transcatheter procedure and possibly a second open heart surgery or a heart transplant. The breakfast will be from 8 a.m. until noon at Fire Station 20, Hopkins County Central Fire Station, 1286 South Texas Street. That's next to UPS. Vickery is a was a fireman for nine years until his health forced him to an early retirement. Vickery's wife is unable to work as a teacher's aide while caring for her husband and their four children. The National Weather Service will be offering a free class at the Skywarn Severe Weather Program on Thursday, February 9th from 7, 8, uh, 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. The program will be held at City Hall in Silver Springs and is held in partnership with the Hopkins County Emergency Management and Silver Springs Police Department. This class is free of charge and no pre-registration is necessary. The class is for organized storm spotters and anyone who is interested in severe weather. This is part of a regional severe weather, weather preparedness campaign, which will include spotter training sessions across 46 counties in North and Central Texas. This year's program discusses thunderstorm formation, ingredients, and features associated with severe and non-severe storms. Several examples from 2015 and 2016 will be shown. The program will discuss spotter operations and recommended reporting procedures. Most importantly, they will discuss what one can do to keep others safe when thunderstorms threaten. With the approval of becoming a District of Innovation by the Silver Springs School Board during their Monday session, the District Advisory Committee and principals will serve as the committee to provide a comprehensive education program for the district, which may or may not include innovative curriculum, instructional methods, provisions regarding community uh, participation, campus governance, and parental involvement as well as modifications to the school day or year. They also may consider provisions regarding the district's budget and sustainable program funding, accountability, and assessment measures that exceed the requirements of state and federal laws, and identify requirements imposed by the code that inhibit the goals of plan and from which the district should be exempt on adoption of this plan. After the plan is approved, it will be posted on the district website for at least 30 days. After that, the school board will have to pass this with a two-third majority vote. The plan allows for exemptions that Superintendent Michael Lamb stated the local district may or may not desire. Among exemptions allowed are educator certifications, teacher contracts, first and last day of school, length of the school day, class size, and certain purchasing and contract requirements. Prohibited exemptions include district governance, curriculum, state assessment, and state accountability systems, school finance, and federal requirements. School districts that have adopted the District of Innovation include Canton, Denton, Capel, Forney, Galena Park, Kaufman, Grand Prairie, Rivercrest, El Paso, Sherman, Terrell, Texarkana, and a large number of others. Districts of Innovation were created in an amended Chapter 12 of the Texas Education Code, House Bill 1842, passed in the 84th session of the Texas Legislature, created the amendment. Women with Heart is a new celebration event for Hopkins County sponsored by Christus Mother Francis Hospital in Sulphur Springs. Director of Marketing Sherry Moore invites you to nominate someone and to register to attend the dinner event. This is an event that they scheduled for our community, opportunity for them to introduce some things from Tyler to our community. Um, they're actually doing it in four different communities. So they're actually, and I'm going to look at my notes so I get it right, they're actually doing it in Jacksonville on the 16th of February. They're doing it in Tyler on the 21st, and then they're doing it on the 28th in Lindale, Texas. And okay, so, so we get the first yes, one, Yes, really. we're the first one. On February so, 7th. February 7th. That's Bring some of the traditions of Christus Mother Francis to Sulphur yes, Springs. Yes, yes. And uh, they are bringing uh, 
speakers. There will be a panel. There will be a healthy dinner because obviously uh, February is Heart Month. That's the focus for women and heart because February is um, Heart Month. And so this is a way that they're celebrating it. And they wanted to include our community because we're one of their new um, hospitals to Christus. And then also as part of the Christus Mother Francis uh, Northeast Texas region, we're part of that. And so they wanted the opportunity to have something here in um, Hopkins County. Okay. So well, it's a good time of year for us. Yes because it seems to be nomination season. It is. It is. It's just about time for that chamber banquet mm -hmm. and all those things when we nominate all the citizen of the year and the woman of the year and all those wonderful things. That's an awesome, great event for our community. Now, in some of the uh, beautiful color publication that has come out, and maybe some folks out there have seen this too, the Lois and Peaches Owen. Yes. Uh, uh, fund is yes. something that also helps yes. this. Yes, the Lois and Peaches Owens heart hospital they uh, they gave the money for the heart hospital to build the heart hospital in tyler and i'm not the expert on that hospital except to tell you that it's gorgeous and beautiful and wonderful and they do all their heart procedures there at that facility okay. so their um, their cno and their assistant vice president her name is deb taylor and she will be with us the night of that event and so you will get the opportunity to meet her you will get the opportunity to meet some of the other key individuals that are involved with that um, particular hospital there and that's part of Mother Francis. It's their heart hospital. And they've asked for one of our local providers to be on their panel as well. I don't know which one they ended up selecting, but we gave them several names of people that they could contact. Okay. So there'll be the meal, there'll be the panel discussion, and they'll answer questions, and they'll share with the uh, ladies um, at the event, and then there'll be door prizes as well. So uh, I've not been to one myself, so I, to be truthful, I was the first person that registered they sent me the email and said we want to do this and so i went out to the website and it's and it and no one else had registered so it gave me the opportunity to be the first person to register and so we've worked diligently to be truthful through our cardiac rehab program and the ladies that work down there have contacted all of our current patients and past patients for the last several years that have been cardiac patients at our facility that have possibly had a cath done at our hospital and uh, not necessarily at um Peaches and uh, Lewis and Peaches Heart. Lewis and Peaches Owen Heart Hospital, okay. necessarily. That's a mouthful for me to say when you're not used to it. But um, so we've invited them to come and to also nominate other women as heroes that um, uh, for that particular okay. event. And I do uh, believe that nomination process is going well. Let's talk about the evening, February okay. 7th. Isn't that a week from today? A Tuesday? It is. It's a Tuesday. And at the Civic Center, 5.30 to 7.30. And Correct. to this, Sherry, a heart-healthy meal. Yes. Is it free? Yes, it's all free. It's all free. You have two options or two ways to register. You can call 903-606-DOCS, D-O-C-S, which is a number in Tyler, or you can go to their website. It's ChristusTMFHeart.org. And then if you're just saying, okay, Sherry, you're asking me to do too much. I can't manage that. Just call 903-439-4062. That's my number. And myself or Lakin Johnson, who works in my office, one of us will get you registered one way or the other. So we'll get you on the list to attend the event. I know that they still have room. They uh, designated a certain number of people that could come, and they still have some room. So, okay, so the registration is sort of a head count. Yes, the registration is just a head count for food, so they'll know exactly how much food uh, to have. But we'd love. We, you still have time to register. That's not a problem. So we would love to get you registered so that you can attend this this wonderful event. Again, it's free. Uh, if you've had heart disease and you want to come and learn some things, that's great. If you say, well, I've never had heart disease, that's okay too because we're all at risk at some point and so it's better for us to be preventative. Come and hear those things we should be doing just to make sure we're on the right track. Christus Mother Francis Hospital is doing lovely things in Sulphur Springs as it has been doing in their other yes. locations. Yes, yes, this is just new. We're, they've just added us as one of their locations, which is exciting. So based on what I understand about how they do the women with heart, the goal would be something they would do annually every year. So we will look forward to that, to the ladies in the community. Well, I'm hoping that our event here, our inaugural yes. event, is a big yes. success. Me and too. it becomes on our annual calendar. Me too. Well, you have been working at 
the hospital in Sulphur Springs for low these many years. Yes, low these many years. In <laughs> August, it will be 22 years. So, yes, okay. ma'am. Been just a little while. But it's and, been a great journey. And, and I've loved it. Yeah, and your transition uh, from your the various different jobs you've done and places you've had offices within the hospital. Yes, yes. I've moved around just <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. But it's been, it's been good. And this new venture or journey that we're on has been um, exciting. Um, you know, I tell people in the community, when your mission statement gets to be to extend the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, and you love Jesus like I do, then it's really even more exciting. So it's given us an opportunity to start every meeting with devotionals or reflect reflections as we call them and it um, it's just been a, a wonderful atmosphere that we really really enjoyed we're working and it's going to take a little bit of effort but we'd like to do a, a prayer over the intercom in the morning and in the evening we're working on getting the right equipment to get all that situated so there are definitely some things that Christus uh, systems and Christus health bring to our community that um, that aligned with my values and so that's been an exciting thing to see and um, you know the Lord is blessing and we're just walking in faith and trusting him along this journey that we're all on so did you mention that you're going to maybe a new type of training or yes today I'm meeting? actually headed about lunchtime I actually have to be in Irving and um, I represent the hospital for patient experience and um, customer service and how we can you know better provide um, to our patients that live here in uh, Hopkins County. And so it's a training. It gives you an opportunity to network with people from Louisiana and New Mexico and San Antonio and Beaumont and all the different places that Christus Health has hospitals. Okay. They all come and we spend this afternoon and then this evening and then all day tomorrow. And so it is, uh, this will be my third time to go. And so it brings a lot of information back that I can share with our team. And we get a lot of support from Christus Systems Health System, but we also get a lot of support from Christus um, Trinity Mother Francis and Tyler. So we have we have great support from those those entities. I did not realize that Christus was that had that extensive a network. Yes, yes, they even have hospitals in South and uh, um, you know Mexico and South America. So yes, they are very much um, very much a large organization. And I would quote you on how many hospitals I'd get that wrong. I'd have to study it or how many actual employees they have, I probably could would not do justice to that. But when the board of directors looked at everything, this was the entity that they felt was a good match for our community. And so they 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 made that decision and so it's been a been a journey for all of us. What is your job title now? Oh, well, right this minute, it's technically still, unless something changes, I'm technically director of marketing, managed care contracting, volunteers, and then I wear that patient experience hat. So, you know, we're required by the government to survey our patients, and that's a requirement. And so that's that's part of that patient experience hat. Uh, with Christus, we went to a new survey tool. Some of our patients that will be getting surveys in the mail, because it's done randomly, they will notice that the surveys are much shorter. And so we're following what Christus Health does for all of their entities. And so we're using that that system. And so I'm having to learn all that and get all that set up. And so just been some growing pains maybe on that and on my part, trying to learn something that's new that I've not learned before. But um, again, I think all of the things that we're moving towards are going to be wonderful things for our hospital and for our community. And I would expect you to say no less than that. That's, that's lovely. Right. And coming from you, I know it's very mm -hmm. sincere. Um, and I count you as a woman with heart, well, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. And with our event coming up just in one more week. Now, if yes. someone wants to nominate a lady and we have only about a minute, sure. How do they do it again? They can go to their website, Christus T M F Heart dot org okay. or they can call 903-606-DOCS D-O-C-S or if you just say I can't do this just call the hospital and ask to speak to Sherry Moore and believe me they'll get you to me and then we'll figure <laughs> out how to get that done but my number is 903-439-4062 and that would be uh, for a nomination nomination or, or a reservation, reservation either one we will be glad to help you 
On Saturday, February 4th, 2017, at Buford Park, Peavine Pinion Pool, located behind the Civic Center, the Larry Buster Memorial City uh, Sulphur Springs Kids Trout Fishing Day will take place. The event, which is sponsored by the National Wild Turkey Federation, Texas Parks and Wildlife in Fisheries Division, the City of Silver Springs, local merchants, civic organizations, and many individual contributors will run from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. on Saturday. Soft drinks and hot dogs will be provided, and there will be drawings for outdoor prizes for participating kids. Kids of all ages are encouraged to bring their rods, reels, and bait to take a chance at catching some of the 1,500 rainbow trout stocked by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department personnel. Whole kernel corn, Berkeley powder eggs, and trout bait along with small spinners are generally the favorite food for trout. Because this event is sponsored in part by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, there's a special exemption in effect during the event. Adults who are actively helping kids fish for trout are exempt from the normal license requirements during the event only from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. on Saturday. All other anglers are required to have a freshwater fishing license. There's no minimum size to the trout that are caught, but there is a daily bag limit of five rainbow trout per person. Here's Don Julian with sports. The Lady Cats softball team scrimmaged a good Forney team at Forney Monday night. I talk with Lady Cats softball coach David Carrillo. It was definitely a great scrimmage for us because of uh, just the people who were playing. Uh, great competition. They had three pitchers that really could bring it and uh, very challenging for our hitters. Uh, one of the girls at the end that threw was going to Kansas. Uh, freshman girl, they really brought it pretty good too. So, uh, you know, offensively, we didn't really hit the ball as well as I would have liked, but uh, I know hitting will come. And uh, pitching-wise, I thought we did a good job, you know, for the most part. I feel like, you know, we threw all three pitchers. We threw uh, Bailey Haggerty and uh, Ali, um, Ali Fight in the middle, and then we ended up with Landry Bell. So, uh, you know, they, they did well for the most part. And like I said, they're going to do nothing but get better as we go. And, you know, there's a, little, a few mistakes that we made out in the field and some little things that I know we can fix. Uh, but, uh, you know, for the first part and first scrimmage, it, I, I was, you know, I wasn't like thoroughly pleased, but I'm not like discouraged by no means. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of just, you know, getting some time. And I do know the competition we played was really good. Absolutely. For, they've got a reputation. Um, uh, how about catcher? Uh, who was in that position? Uh, Ashley Moore caught last night. She did a really good job. Very encouraging. She was able to catch all three pitchers. And, you know, that, that's something right now we're kind of evaluating for. And we need her to get used to catching the different – because every pitcher has a different style. And, you know uh, – she was able to handle it pretty well, and you know, like I said, there's little things that we can work on with her, and, but I think she's going to do a great job for us this season. Now, you'll have a lot of games, I, I believe, coming up on Saturday. Usually you scrimmage three or four different teams, seem like. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the, the monster doesn't stop. We, uh, we scrimmage the Colony first thing Saturday morning, and then we finish up. Uh, we have Rockwall in the middle and North Forney at the end. So, But, but you know, the preseason is where you evaluate your kids, and, and you want to make it tough. And like I said, in our preseason, you know, we try to make it tough too. So uh, that makes us better. I think our kids, they don't sit there and worry about so much about uh, – the board, I mean, of course, you want to win them all, but bottom line is, is getting in the district, being ready to go, and then hopefully making a good run in the playoffs. That's where you want to get to. And to get to there, you have to, you know, it's a process. You're building a house, and we're building our house right now. We started last night, so it's going to continue to get nothing but better for us, I feel. Uh, I guess so you'll maybe play some different position players or maybe uh, pitch some different pitchers. Yes, I, we're, we're going to still stick with our strategy of, of getting some pitchers, some innings, mixing it up, and uh, – doing that, you know, kind of sharing the wealth for a little while. And then, uh, like I said, batting-wise, we'll, uh, right now, you know, we're carrying 11 on the varsity. So uh, there's not really much, you know, we're still evaluating from our JV and seeing what we need to do. But uh, a bottom line for our program is you need to get as many kids playing at the, at you know, as many kids playing at one time, be it varsity or JV. And the whole thing that, you know, I think our kids, you know, we're trying to get them to understand they do better by playing than not playing because I don't really want them to sit on varsity and do nothing. It doesn't do them any good. So, uh, you know, we're trying to find roles for our kids and uh, hopefully they'll accept their roles. And if not, then, you know, we just, you know, we try to talk them down and say, hey, you know, we, it is what it is. So, uh, you know, again, that's what happens. But that's good, though, because we have that competition to be able to do that. You know, our JV has been very competitive the last few years. So. Uh, you know, uh, competition makes the program better. 
what was the Forney score? Did you? <clears throat> yes, it was six to one. Six it was it was six to one. It, it, it was actually two to one going into like the seventh inning, hmm. and then just we made some mistakes and things just didn't go our way for an inning. But then after that, we got the you know got it back underneath our feet and played better. So uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. It's a learning thing, and I think our kids you know realize that. And and the thing is, I know they know we played a good team and. Yeah. They would much rather face that type of pitching than going over there and not facing any good pitching at all. Doesn't do you any good. Anybody get any big hits? Or? Oh yes, Ali Fott had two hits last oh, night, okay. and uh, Jay Dowdy had a couple of hits last night, good. and uh, Alyssa Abram had one. So we, uh, you know, that was pretty much, I believe, rounded out the hitting for the most part. But uh, you know, we left some runners on in scoring position too to have a chance to take the lead. And one inning, we just didn't get the big hit. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you're batting. We were batting 11 kids so yeah. you know in a game you're gonna bat nine and you know things change and you know you get more kids rounds but uh, another thing that I was really pleased on pleased with is uh you know our kids got about three or four at bats so mm -hmm. that's another good thing you know that's you know you get too many kids running up there you don't get as many at bats so they got to take a lot of cuts and they'll continue to be able to do that this weekend did you play seven or nine no we ended up playing nine, nine. yeah mm -hmm. each pitcher threw three and that was good to see them do that yeah Ashley, she was just a war horse. We made her catch all nine, but she loves it. And, uh, you know, the rest of them, we just, like I said, they got to see uh, a lot of good pitching, you know, because they got to bat a lot of times. So, you know, that's just going to help them in the long run. Very good. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.